I want to talk a little bit about this uh, i9 14900K, uh, 13900K, so forth controversy with Intel. And what it boils down to is there's been some uh, people reporting instabilities with the i9s and um, Intel has been scrambling to come up with a response. But what it boils down to is power and heat. In my opinion, this is kind of my opinion, but I mean, I think most people would agree with this. So in the past, it's been a bit of the Wild West when it comes to these processors. So Intel knows they get better performance with more power. And the motherboard manufacturers know that if they throw more power at the chip, they'll get more performance. But what's caused the problem is, is it's causing chip degradation the chips then don't clock as high they can become unstable they can call it can cause crashing and the reason is the powers have simply been kind of unlimited if you leave everything set to auto in the motherboard setup in general that means unlimited and in some cases you can be pushing 300 watts of power draw and it's simply not possible to take one of these chips and get 300 watts of heat dissipation out of a surface area this small. It just isn't going to happen. Maybe if you chilled your water, but I mean, that is kind of ridiculous. I mean, who wants to put a air conditioner compressor in their computer to chill their water? So you have to look at what kind of cooling you have and tailor the cooling and the power delivery and I wish there was a better way to do this, but for instance, this thing is set to auto right now, which essentially means unlimited. And I'm using a trial version of IDA64 on a uh, test machine I built. And so what we're seeing here is this one, this particular motherboard, it's drawing close to 260 watts, 256 at this moment. And I know that's uh, kind of hard to read. I can use the uh, magnifier here. Where is it? and show you, get a little closer, 255 watts is what we're currently drawing. And we're getting 5.05 gigahertz. Now, this is an all core load, so you're not gonna get like close to six gigahertz when you're loading all the cores at 100%. You're gonna get something a little less than that. And 5.05, 5.04 on an all core load is pretty good. But you'll see here our temperatures are at 94 degrees. Now. 95 now and it will continue to climb as the water heats up in the water cooler and Intel's thermal protection will kick in at 100 degrees and start to slow things down but the problem is that's meant for an emergency situation it's not meant for you to run it this way all the time Intel put that in as a safeguard but what we've slowly uh, digressed into is this being acceptable and it's not acceptable do you drive your car around at the red line all the time no because it would ruin your car and it wouldn't last very long and that's what people are doing we've got nine percent throttling now it says that and we're up to 98 degrees 99 degrees we're almost hitting 100 we still are maintaining 5.04 but we're going to start dropping over here we're ever slightly going to start dropping and losing some of our performance. But remember that 5.05 we had at that at one time when the water was nice and cold. So what can we do to combat this? Well, on this particular system, I've got a water cooler similar to this one. It's a two fan, so you'd have two 120 millimeter fans here. And of course, you've got your uh, water pump here. And it, I happen to know this can dissipate about 220 watts. We're currently pulling 250, 260 right now. Therefore, we're over by about 40 watts. What's the solution? Well, tailor your power delivery to your cooling solution, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to tell the motherboard, don't send power above and beyond what I can handle here. We're down to 4.96, 4.95 in some cases, and that's going to continue to get worse as time goes on. Now what we have here is we have a case of diminishing returns. So what that is, is at the beginning, the more power you send, and this is not 
this is actually has to do with workers this is number of workers and their output but this graph still works for processors the more power you send it the more performance you get and then it starts to taper off at the very end and then at the very 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 end it actually goes down with too much power and that's what would happen if we continue to run this at this high power draw that water would heat up to the level to where our performance in many cases is going to be lower than if we just set the power limit to 220 watts so let's do that I'm going to reboot this is a gigabyte BIOS so this would be how you do it in a gigabyte BIOS not necessarily obviously be procedure would be different in a ASRock or um, MSI or ASUS motherboard so what we're going to do in here is we're going to turn on power limits and we're going to set our power limit just to a hard 220 watts. So I'm going to go to advanced CPU settings and I'm not going to belabor this point. I'm going to be fast and I'm going to go to turbo power limits. It's set to auto, which means unlimited, and I'm going to set it to enabled and I'm going to set our power limit for uh, power limit one and power limit two to 220 watts. And I'm going to and that's our package power limit. I'm not going to save the profile. I'm going to save and exit. And so now, instead of being set to unlimited, just do whatever you want. We're now set to a hard 220 watts. This is the max you can draw at any given time. And we're going to see what that does to our temperatures and as well as our performance. Now, if you remember, after the heat soak started, we started to see numbers drop to 4.95 on an all-core load. And let's open our task manager again. Let's open up um, IDA64. And let's start this thing up again. We haven't allowed the water to cool. I haven't made any cuts here. And we'll just kind of start that back up again. Now you'll see right away we're at 4.9 gigahertz. And we had dropped to 4.95 when we were overheating the crap out of our processor, totally cooking it. Well, right now we're in the mid 80s. We're at 83 degrees, 82 degrees. And let's just let this go for another minute or so and see how things pan out. As you remember, it took about three minutes to start hitting 100 degrees before. Now I'm gonna also bring up the uh, magnifier. While this is running, and uh, just so you can see, we're at 84. That's our package uh, temperature, I believe. Yes, yeah, CPU package. And our power is at 220 dead. I don't know if you can read that. Probably can't, you can. And you can see our graph only goes to 200 watts. It's actually off the scale here. See, the, the graph goes to 200. So when whoever wrote this, they never perceived anyone would go beyond 200 watts. And let's go back to our temperatures. We're at 85 watts. I would expect this thing to level off. I'm not going to make the video long. Uh, I would expect this thing to level off probably around 90 degrees. And for me, 90 is where I like to stay below. I know technically the red, ultra, ultra red line is 100, but I think 90, I mean, that's darn warm. You know, 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. So we're 90% to the boiling point of water. But by last time, by this point, instead of 86, we were at 97-ish, 98 degrees. We had throttling, by the way. We have no throttling right now. This would be where the throttling would show up. We have no throttling. And um, let me uh, turn off the magnifier here. And we're holding... I'm trying to. We're holding steady. There we go. It's very busy right now. We're right around 4.9 gigahertz, 4.89, 4.9 gigahertz. So we've dropped 0.05 gigahertz. That's like point something percent. So small, no one would ever know it. And yet we're being so much better to our processor at 86 degrees. Essentially, this is so, so small you'd hardly notice it. And I'm telling you that uh, at 253 watts, this would go below this. If we let it continue to run, because we only let it run for like three minutes. If we let it continue to run, it would go lower than this. And this is that diminishing returns you were seeing where after you get to the top, you actually start to drop 
off, lower, and actually lose performance the more power you give it. And again, we're holding steady right at 86 degrees. We've leveled off, so uh, I don't think we're going to get any warmer. So uh, we've, we've uh, reached equilibrium with our water temperature. Hopefully that helps. So this is how we tailor ours. And so we build uh, a 14900K, we don't put a two-fan water cooler on it. We actually use a three-fan, which comes down like this far. Um, but you, again, you are there's only so much you can get out of the surface area, you know, we're talking about here. So um, customers of ours that are worried about this being an issue for them, don't worry. We've taken all this into account. Um, it's all those customers running machines where everything's set to auto and it's drawing tremendous amounts of power that might have something to worry about.